Greetings from Woodturning with Dick. I've already named this piece Perception. No? Perceiving. Just because it's difficult to pronounce. Or Perception. But one of those. Lenore will probably change it anyway. But we've got a Gimlet Burr, Australian. Smallest one I've come across. Nice and petite, fairly thin. That is going to be the main part of the eye. That's going to be the, what do you call it? The iris. That's the one, the colourful bit. That's going to be the pupil. A little bit, a little chunk off of there. Be a nice little pupil in the middle. And that will be my base. Might keep that natural edge on there because that's quite attractive. Uh, just tidy it up like I normally do. Flatten that, obviously, because that's a little bit bowed at the moment. Uh, I might trim it down, obviously square it up, etc. See, I've drawn out my eye of roughly the size I'm looking at. And I think slight bow over here. I'm going to lose a little bit of this really thin stuff over the side. I've got some cut marks to get rid of. Put a chuck grip in the back here. That'll do for a chuck grip. Went a bit deep in there, there in the middle, but never mind. It doesn't matter. Chuck should reach in there. Easy. Can you see these at the top here? I want to round that over enough to get rid of those. I'm going to attack it this way because I tend to find if you come this way, you get a lot of tear out on the edge. So if you come in from this side, you get a nice clean cut on this and no tear out. Just about there. Now I can really work on the curve that I want. Okay, all cut marks at the side are gone. Got a nice gradual bow over. Now I want to hollow down there a fair amount. See, I don't want to go through just yet. And I'm just about to break through there. A little bit more. Ta-da! I am through. Brilliant. Enough room there for my jigsaw to get in. We'll just avoid the chuck. Fantastic. This should be fun. Clamp the chuck into the vise, nice and tight. Hopefully not damaging the chuck. Clamp the vise to the drill table. Very slow start. I've lined it up with the dead middle of where that hole was. We have success. I've managed to drill through nice and straight here, nice and straight here. As you can see, these temporary rods, uh, just to show positioning really, that it's nice and in line. Next thing I've got to think about is the mounting on this, which will be like so. Do I want to do it straight up? It's a bit boring. I really like the couple of pieces I've done that are off to one side. They're just a bit funky. I kind of like that. Wee. For this one, because it's quite small, I usually use eight millimeter rod, but I'm going to use some five millimeter stainless steel. It's a little more flexible, but they aren't going to be massively long. So it shouldn't be an issue. And if there's two of them holding out, no problems there at all. It's not like they're going to bend. About 45 degrees, I reckon. There's either side of the line down the middle. But I'm thinking about there, about there. At a similar sort of angle. If I, Well, the same angle if I can get it. Picture that. Not quite like that. Same system as before, I think. Got my five mil drill bit in place. This one's very shallow, but this one's a lot deeper. And that goes in there beautifully. <laughs> Love the way you can see it through the hole. <laughs> I've denibbed the sound of cedar off of there. I'll wax it later because the wax I use can be put on by hand and taken off by hand. Now I'm going to put the jigsaw in. I'll put it on a fairly slow speed, I think. Huzzah! Now just a, a lot of sanding to clean all this up. I think all I want for the pupil is something about that big. So the original bit of bog oak, it's a bit of a waste, isn't it? I think I'll actually turn that into a handle for one of Lenore's carving chisels. She'll be pleased, don't tell her. Instead, I'll use this. A little bit lighter in colour. Darken up nicely when it's got a bit of wax on it. That will do. Not the entire length, obviously. I'm not going to use this because of this. I want the eye on both sides. And even though this wood is going to be completely gilded, it's not really thick enough to go in there. 
actually want the, the ball to be more ball-like and that would be a bit too flat. Gonna use a bit of ash instead. Good thickness. All I want is that much off the corner. I'll take these staples out in a minute and by measuring it like this, I can measure the same the other side because it's nice and squarely cut. Then I can put my force it down through there, down an inch or so, do the same the other side, turn my bog oak down to this size, poke that in there and then turn it into not quite a ball, but you'll see. So just a 16 mil plug needed to go in my little hole. Told you I wasn't going to use that full length of bog oak. Just a tiny little square. Two of them, actually, technically. But just going to show you one. That's 16 point something with a tiny little taper down this side just to fill in the hole and smack it in there with a hammer. Going to rough it quickly down with some 80 grit. And it's going in my hole. Hit the road, Jake. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more, more. Hit the road, Jake. So it, as you can see, I've left a bit sticking out both sides, which is obviously for the indents made by this and this. I don't really know exactly what I'm doing right now. What I do know is I need a flat spot in the middle and the both ends to be rounded. So what I want to do, this the, the thinnest bit of this flat spot is going to be the thinnest bit of this flat spot, and then the rest of it rounded. So you've got a, a bulbous outside here, and the same this side, without any edge showing. But it's not going to be the exact same size as this. It's going to be slightly smaller. Not the nicest piece of looking piece of ash, which I'm rather pleased about. Got these grey stripes through it. It doesn't matter because it will be gilded, not the bog oak. Quick measure. It's almost bang on 10, so that would fit very snugly in the hole, but I don't want it to. <laughs> Bit more. There's my lines for not going past. The rest of that, I'm going to round into a ballish shape. Uh, move this rest a bit closer or somebody will be moaning at me. Ah, oh, man. This bit of ash got a big crack through it. All right, gonna glue it up. And normally I'll put sand and cedar on the wood and then super glue, but I'm not gonna bother because I don't care if this wood gets stained or not. And some random dust, which happens to be purple heart. Of course, if I cut this down any more for shaping, it's gonna completely get, mm, you're an idiot. Absolute idiot. Uh, one minor saving grace, there's no crack this side. From what I can see at the end here, in terms of eyeball-like, I'm liking it. Just need to round that a little bit more. Yeah. All right, I'll be back with you, I guess, when I take it off the lathe to uh, hand finish these. Successfully sanded that nice and flat and oval. Lovely. Done the same that side. I've wedged it in with some 180 Abronet, just folded three times. So it's in there fairly secure. That's exactly kind of where I want it in terms of bulge sticking out the front. That kind of works. I think I'm just going to drill up into this for my rod to hold it on. And eventually I'll put a little washer in the bottom. There's just a little hole up through there. Awesome. Ooh. All right, I planed my bit of bog oak. I've still got the natural edge, still got to tidy up that natural edge. Squared everything up nicely. Uh, again, got a lot of sanding, some beautiful, beautiful patterning in this bog oak. Can you see that? It's gorgeous. Anyway, I've drilled my holes, put my rods in, 
I worked out my angle that I needed by holding this up straight and using my 90 degree angle to get a nice straight line and then measure the degree angle that I needed to drill at. Simples. So in theory, this should now be vertical when I pop this on here. That's what I planned anyway. Jackpot. I'm gonna sand all this to a high finish and the sides clean up this side. When my eye comes back, I'll be able to fit that in there. I've made up the hardware as such and the washer that I mentioned, the right thickness out of bog oak. So the sanding is a bit boring. So uh, once I've sanded it all, I'll start filming again, which will be just like, I've now got all the components waxed, hand finished in there to 180. It's not gonna be seen very much at all. My bog oak, I finished to 400 grit, rounded the corners mm. off so nothing too sharp on the edges and corners. Put my brand and piece number 847 on there. Put some nice little square feet on the corners. That'll keep it nice and protecting of surfaces. Denibbed all of this and put a little bit of wax on the surface here as well and rubbed all that back. You can see all the natural cracks in the bog oak. Happy with that, that's fine. Polished up my rods. So Lenore, as good as she is, has covered this. This is just, see the where I put my thumb there, that's just moisture, it's cold in here, warm hands. So she's gilded this successfully. And yeah, I, I'm a turner. I like things round. I should have, it's my fault. I should have made the bog oak slightly raised. So she, she had something to gild up to. And she's tried scraping off the gold a couple of times, I think, and then re-gilding around the outside edge. There's some gold in the grain. And this side's even worse. It's slightly oval. So I can't, I can't actually possibly use that as it is but I had a quick think and I quickly knocked out a couple of pupils on the lathe so I just need to finish sanding those bit of sand and cedar on wax measured those to just under seven millimeter what I've got to do drill a hole in the center of the eye so roughly the center of where she's scraped away I've, I've made them slightly bigger than this circle here I was being, being really careful, but sorry, Lenore, I damaged the gold a little bit. Not on this side, but on this side. However, that does fit in there beautifully and snugs up nicely to the gold. I really do quite like that artsy look to it. With, yeah, with it off to the side. It's a bit of a mission drilling them at the right angle and measuring everything correctly instead of just having it straight up. But I just think it looks cool. And with that wainy edge, <laughs> it's gonna look even better. I love it. It's gonna rem remember which way around these go. I know actually, no, that goes in the top, that goes in the bottom, that goes on the bottom too, underneath the gold piece. I do kind of need three pairs of hands for this. Let's put that will sort of go up there like that, with that on it, and poke that right back there. Uh, apparently, I did this one a bit long. Mark that up, trim that down quickly. Shortened. Now let's put it back in the hole. Right, that's in there. This bottom one's a little bit loose and it's gonna be sitting on this end. I think a dab of super glue and some activator. That will stop that coming out at the bottom. And then I can slide this onto my polish rods. Now that is quite firmly on there. So I'm not gonna glue them in the bottom. And I'm not gonna glue them into this. Because unless you're picking up by this piece, even then, haha, -ha, see? Let me polish these up, then I'll give you a different view as I'm sticking the pupil in stroke on. So the pupil didn't turn out too bad. A little concave there, so I can it'll sit flush on the surface. Got a little bit of gilding repair to do for Lenore. But overall, it looks a bit like a cupcake or two, or looks like something else, which I'm not going to say on my channel. Feel free to say so in comments if you like but yeah it's not i don't like it, it it's not what i uh, it is what i envisaged to start with but it didn't turn out quite as i wanted it to you remember the bit of gimlet burr that i took out the middle i made a little bowl out of that 
Um, so, yay. Lenore can gild the top rim there when she wants to. See you soon.